Hello, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Down the Tape. Today is a special episode. I have one of my best friends in the social media world, Brittany Harris, on with us. Uh, Brittany is as uh, affectionately, I believe she calls herself, but I know at least know have come to know her <laughs> as the head bitch in charge over at Ravon. Um, and Brittany, uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Take some time to let the people know where to find you. Yes. So um, that is my Twitter handle. And it kind of started with the founders because when I was talking to people on social media, they assumed I was a man. And so I got broed a lot and just, and I actually got people to the point where, because I'm usually answering our Twitter messages that they thought that I was a social media person and that like deeply offended me as a head <laughs> bitch in charge and I couldn't have it. And Love so it. they started calling me that internally and they were like, you need to set up a Twitter account. You need to link it to the Rave on one, you know, shout out Rave on sports. Um, so that, you know, I would be known as that. And then it just became like a thing where everybody, you know, all the podcasters and everybody, that's what they call me. I don't really have a real name to them anymore, but <laughs> mom is my other real name. So, you know, it's weird for me to even hear Brittany most of the time. Like, who is that? Who are they saying that to? I, was gonna I don't say, know I don't, who that person is. I don't think I've referred to you as Brittany many times <laughs> since we've known no. you. No. Generally, it's HBIC. <laughs> yes, it is. And it just became a thing where that's just how everybody does and it's an affectionate term so it's it's funny but um you know rave on sports is a new sports app we are from lexington kentucky which is you know technically my hometown and um i am a huge super fan i you also can't see from this video but i'm five feet tall <laughs> so you know there i love sports and there are lots of different avenues for people to get into in sports, you don't have to be tall and play basketball. So I was thankful for that. Who found a way in? Didn't have to use my height as a disadvantage for me. And so, you know, um, we have several other founders, three silent co-founders, and then one founder that I work with day to day. His name's James Clark. Yep, and yep. Um, we are all super fans. And so we just kind of had this idea that fans are really frustrated. There weren't really good sports apps that were really out there to be engaging for them. Um, be betting apps are fun. Fantasy apps are fun, but you're not really on there for very long. You get on, you place a bet, set your lineup, you kind of get back off. And, you know, we really started thinking about, you know, if we had the perfect sports app for us, what would that look like? So we actually went and talked to people. We went and did talked um, to students at the University of Kentucky, did a bunch of surveys, a bunch of polls, asked our friends, and they all had the kind of same consensus that we did. I'm frustrated. You know, I hate that the rep always makes this call. I hate that during NCAA, they feel like they've got to step it up and just get crazy with it. They're like, I'm going to mm -hmm. make every dumb call possible because I'm on TV right now and it's big time. So, you know, everybody's frustrated about that and everybody really wants a place to talk and be able to chat with each other. So, but really the best part about our app and that also came in an organic way is the hosts. So the first year that we actually beta tested this, we did it in Lexington, Kentucky. We got some free promotion from our home state and we got some users that way. And James and I kind of, played host during this time and just kind of kept the conversation going, made sure that there was no lag because fans really just want to have other people in there to talk to. So if there's somebody in there talking all the time, then, you know, they'll chat for hours. You already know that. Oh and yeah. I have a blast on there. Yeah. I mean, you can get crazy on there. I mean, a bunch oh, yeah. of people, different people get on there. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's about tacos. Sometimes it's about who's drinking, what, who's had a rough, <laughs> shitty day, whatever. Generally, Generally, when I'm in the chat, it's about what we're drinking and what kind of bets I'm losing. <laughs> yes, exactly. And what kind of bets everybody's placing. So it's very, it feels like you're kind of, you know, hanging out with your friends, watching sports, you know, even if you can't be. So, yeah. And, go oh, ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So you before we get too far into the, like, the history of stuff, 
tell tell the fans about the app you know uh, so obviously like you were referencing you know there's there's a big group chat you know there's a couple of people who host and kind of lead the chat but many many times it kind of takes on a beast of its own and there's a lot of talking obviously about the game there's a lot of complaining about ref calls like you said talking about drinks and stuff so kind of tell us about the other features of the app other than just the big draw which is the group chat which is the you know the the fan talking so you can bet or you can vote on everything that happens during the game so if you i love kicks that's my thing Mm -hmm. in football you know enough credit you already know that and so i love it and so you can bet on everything that happens and if you disagreed with the play if you hated what the ref said if you're really frustrated by that you can vote on that too and you can actually comment right there and that becomes its own individual thread so if you just want to talk about that one play of the game you don't have to get on social media search by hashtags try to figure out who's talking about that play everybody underneath that one thread is talking about that one individual play and then the algorithm actually tallies the best and worst calls as voted by the fans and it's not really it doesn't really matter whether or not your team won or lost there is a play that was trending for a long time in the app that was a derrick henry stiff arm Mm -hmm. titans lost that game but he's a beast and so it was the top play for like six weeks because everybody would get on the app and they're like, oh my gosh, I remember that. That was crazy. He drug three defenders on the field. So mm-hmm. fans get to say how they feel and they don't have to wait for ESPN to be like, oh, I think this is the best. Or I, you know, maybe the Bengals were having our time. But when we weren't having our time, you know, ESPN wasn't super favorable about us, but we still wanted to be able to get our voice out there. We wanted to be able to bitch and complain and be excited. So this gives fans a way to say how they think. And then we have, you know, game specific chat rooms inside there. So those are special because they revolve around an individual game. So if you're watching the game, you want to talk to people that are watching the same game as you. And so you can do that right in that chat room. And a lot of people, me like to trash talk other people when they're watching games oh we'll get to that don't you worry (laughs) we will get to that (laughs) you can do that there and then the magic is that we have these amazing influencers who have these awesome podcasts who are really funny really knowledgeable about sports hosting these live chats so you can always get in there and talk to somebody funny there's always a different opinion going on like you said there's always some organic conversation you know something that's happening in sports people bitching or excited about one thing or another and they're all watching the same game as you so you know they're sitting there on their couch or you know you can watch you can use it at work Mm -hmm. i know a lot of people we won't say their names because we don't give that user data out (laughs) <laughs> but some people may or may not have used it during the tournament when they had to work just a teeny bit in the chat room, <laughs> just, just a little bit. So, but again, you know, we're not going to rat anybody out. So it's just a really fun way to be able to connect with their fans. And, you know, if you can't be in the stadium, I have five kids, you can't hear them right now. So <laughs> if you can't go to every home game like me, because you've got stuff to do, then you have other people to talk with. And it's a really good time in there. Yeah, it's and from from a host standpoint, because I like to brag about that, you know, it, it's a really great community. I've met some amazing people, actually, somebody under our brand who you've already done an interview with, Braden. Um, I met through Ravon, um, oh, you know, yeah. me and James, uh, another guy who runs pound for pound for us. You know, not that we met on Ravon, but we continue to have fun over there. We bring a lot of outside conversations into there, which I think sometimes confuses people. <laughs> um, that's that's but, the uh, best part is because sometimes you jump in and you're like, what did I walk into? You feel like you walked into the room during a really funny conversation. Oh, yeah. and. And you want to hear what it is. And the best part is, too, is you guys have brought us, other hosts have given us great names, like, oh, this guy's really funny, or this one would be great. And we've gotten a lot of great hosts from that. And you're right, that's one of my favorite thing is the community. They are all hilarious. I enjoy yeah. staying up and just hearing all the funny things that they're going to say. And it's become, it's my favorite thing. Not Can just because you? it's mine. Oh, well, for sure. They don't pay you to say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not I'll, yet. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, honestly, you brought me on, you know, for football, for the Jets specifically. I took on a little bit more of a role than only the Jets, but... Uh, you know, even just from a spectator standpoint, I'm not a college basketball guy. 
And and March Madness is always kind of fun for me to watch, but it's not like a big priority of mine. It became a priority of mine. I did everything I could to make sure I had a game on so I could be in that chat so I could at least understand and not naming specific names like myself, but there may have been one or two times where somebody like me has been at work not being able to watch a game, but in a chat so that I could at least participate. Guys, just tell me what's going on. I don't know, but this is awesome. Just tell me, you know, again, not saying it was me, but yeah, of course. some people of like course. me might have been like that. <laughs> yeah, some people similar with similar jobs, maybe in the same state as you too. But again, yes. Yes. you know, we don't give out any names. Exactly. <laughs> and that, and that's the fun part too, is you can get back in there and somebody will get you caught up. You're like, oh my gosh, what just happened? You know? I miss this big player. The scores change by 10 and people will jump in there and say, again, we don't tell names. I'm stuck at work. I don't know what just happened. We don't know who those people are. They're anonymous, but some people like being, have said uh, that. I feel like I'm being called out just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, a lot. There yeah, are oh, a lot. Oh yeah. And I have to say, shout out the dude. I don't know if you know him personally, the user on there, the dude, he has the best bets all of the time. If you are ever in a chat and you see him bring up a bet, bet it. I might have seen him be wrong three times in, like, the entire NFL season. He always comes. Like, I'll go specifically into a chat. We'll be talking about whatever. I'm like, hey, is the dude here? Like, what are we betting today? What's Make me some money, baby. Come on. What do we got? <laughs> he needs to start charging whoever it is. Uh, he does not want to have his identity revealed, but I do know fine. him in real life. And... um. It is something that he takes very, very intentionally, is obsessive about it. You can so, tell. Yeah. You can yeah. tell because, like I said, it started to become, you know, in the beginning, you know, he would pop up, oh, I've got this bet, I've got that bet, and he kept hitting. I was like, all right, and it became a daily thing. Okay, who are we rooting for? You'd get all your answers. All right, dude, who are we betting today? What are the lines? <laughs> and he'd come out exactly. with his lines, and I'd immediately go over to my MGM betting app, and okay, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. <laughs> You're He's like, all right, changing it, it up. Uh, he, was, he was good. Um, but yeah, man, I, I can't, I can't speak enough about the app and I kind of app, I should say, um, and I kind of brought it up before you brought me in for the jets. I hosted a couple of jets chats. Um, and then you asked me to kind of go into some more chats and host some other teams. And I think it was unintentional at first, but then it became a thing. Me and you became arch nemeses along the way. Um, why do you hate me? I guess I all got to ask. Why do you hate me? You you wouldn't know who I'm who I'm hosting for. Come in, who's everybody? You know, pulling for today. <laughs> everybody on my side. Everybody on my side. Head bitch in charge. Option. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, man. You're doing it intentionally. <laughs> it's well, you know, I go after people one that I think can take it, and <laughs> I am a super competitive person. Yes. I shout out to my son Silas. He hates it when I do this, but I beat him in horse a couple weeks ago. It's three Ooh. weeks now. Still haven't shut up about it. So, <laughs> you know, that's just kind of my thing. I'm a super competitive. I'm really competitive with my husband. I mean, down to everything. Oh, for and sure. we'll do little side bets about everything. Well, you're going to have to clean this if I do, if I win this. So it's just kind of how it is. And so whenever I find somebody that I think, you know, is like that, I'm like, okay, here we go. Not oh, so everybody's a, a trash honor. talker. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Not everybody is, is a trash talker. You know, and some people have kind of a thin skin when it comes to stuff like that. Sure. My dad embarrassed the living shit out of me my entire life. And mm -hmm. so it just, I can't get embarrassed almost now. It's so difficult. And it's kind of like my superpower that you can just, whatever. And mm -hmm. so that's probably one of my favorite things about sports is not to be mean about it, but I think that that's, I think it's funny. And so I got, you know, early on that you could do that. And I was like, all right, okay. And usually too, it just so happened to be sometimes that you would host against somebody that was a new host that hadn't hosted before. Sure. And like, this is a weird thing, but as my mom, as a mom, I'm like, Oh, what if that person doesn't have, you know, what if they don't have as many people on their side, you know? Sure. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> so some of the time it was unintentional, but then it started to become a thing. And I was like, all right, we're just going to roll with this. And now obviously I, set the schedule so i knew who was hosting 
So I knew what team I was going up against. And That's you never right. picked, you know, never hosted for the Bengals. So, you know, we never got – every now and then it lined up where there was just <laughs> one team that I loved that I it couldn't help weird. it. <laughs> yeah, it did, but it, it felt off. It felt like it shouldn't be. And so right. sometimes halfway through, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to hop sides. What does it matter? <laughs> So I like to root against the opposition. And usually you would pull a bunch of people in there. You had a bunch of people on your side. So I was like, you know, I'll go hard. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. We did have a first couple of times. I remember saying something about it, like jokingly. And then I'm like, I'm sure we're doing this. And I know that we played into it a few times about the whole arch nemesis thing. It, honestly, I loved it. It was a blast. Um, So, you know, we kind of went over, you know, the past of the app and how you guys got started and stuff. So. Kind of, if you can, I know that sometimes you want to play stuff close to the vest, and that's fine if you do. Uh, but tell me about the future. What are some future plans? I saw that you guys uh, recently won a competition down there. Tell me about that and kind of what, what the future holds. We did. So we won a competition. Thank you so much. So we've done a bunch of pitch competitions. You know, we have been up against some really stiff competition. And I am, like I said, I'm very competitive. So as soon as, you know, we would compete, you know, and I'd lose, I would immediately scratch what I had done, start over, you know, stay sure. forever, you know, just tweak everything that I did. Sure. But I really learned a lot from doing that just about how to pitch my business, you know, how to talk about it to other people how to get people excited about, you know, my vision, because as a business owner, when you start something, it's just something that's kind of in your head. Nobody else can see it. And it's your job to really explain what that is. So other people can envision it and they can get on board and help you grow, which is, you know, what you did when you jumped on board, you were really early when we were like, Hey, you know, we're yeah. brand new, but you know, get on and try this out. So just learning how to do that, that's, you know, a lot of what that does. And for people that want to start a business, there are a lot of these funds out there to help businesses start. You know, most businesses do not succeed because they don't have help. They don't have resources. They don't have mentorship, direction. So there are these incubator programs that you can sign up for. And you can get your business off the ground. And then you can actually win money to help your business get started by winning these pitch competitions. That's so, awesome. you know, that's part of the appeal. You also get a bunch of resources and mentorship and, you know, relationship building and networking. We've met so many people in the small business and entrepreneurship community. And they're really super amazing and supportive of each other. So that's been great. So we won a competition from the university of kentucky we lost Ooh. four yes so happens but i'll tell you i had to lose to win i'm just Amen. one of those people i had to lose to win and so the best thing i learned was how to win from losing uh -huh. and so we are in the process of fundraising so we're super excited about that we're really going to grow rave on this year and grow the brand we're going to add some new sports um, a men's league. We're also going to add um, women's sports. So WNBA and NCAA women's basketball are coming Love very it. soon to the app and NBA. And so we're real excited. The NBA is all built out, but you know, we're not, we're going to really hard test it before we release it. So it won't be released this year. Sure. Playoffs are already started, but that's already ready. So if you download the app and you see all the icons there and you're like, Oh, is it coming? It's coming. So awesome. we have that coming on. So we're really excited about that. And we're really excited to really promote women's sports too. There has been, their time is, it's been, it should have been a long time ago, but I'm mm -hmm. really excited now that there's really been an emphasis on that. And, you know, women in sports, my daughter plays sports, you know, all of my kids play sports. So I'm really excited that those women are being highlighted. And we've had some really phenomenal women hosts. Adrian mm -hmm. Goodson, who I just adore, former WNBA player. And mm -hmm. so we really want to be able to highlight those women in sports, too, and give you know their fans a platform to be able to talk and cheer for them and get on the refs about the bad calls that they make about the women's league, too, because we know that they're <laughs> trash over there on that side as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have to say, you know, it, it's apps like Rayvon, it's modern social media that I think we've seen like this, this monstrous push for women's sports really entering the forefront. You know, I know last uh, last year on TikTok, 
for the life of me, I cannot remember her play her name, but she was a player for the Oregon Ducks, and she took that uh, viral TikTok of the women's gym. I guess is like a very strong word to call what yeah. they had there, you know, in the NCAA tournament. And then this year, there really was a huge shift in 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 funding for the women's side of it. So it really is apps like Rave On that continue to push a positive narrative for women's sports because there are younger girls out here who need, you know, who need superheroes to look up to as well. You know, uh, two weeks ago, my family took a trip down to Virginia to watch the DC Divas play some football. Shout out Lois Cook and all of my friends awesome. over there. You know, so because my daughter is a big sports kid, you know, she's she's her own superhero, you know, so it's it's nice to see representation in all forms, you know, having having women on like yourself. We've had on. um Oh, Jalen, I cannot remember her last name, uh, but she's a sports photographer for like the Carolina oh, Hurricanes. Wow. And yeah, there's multifaceted. It's not just playing, not just building a business, not just, you know, reporting, but there's all sorts of facets of sports that why can't women be a part of what can a man do better that a woman can't do you know what i mean so i don't i i love i love apps like ray bomb that give voices to women and start to shine more of a light on women's sports because it's tough man that that's especially for women's sports it's tough to get exposure it really is and i'm so glad that you know that video went viral because people didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now it's there, it's become a thing, you know, the WNBA is really going to put some money behind really promoting them, really be intentional about, you know, reaching their fans and helping with engagement and getting people in the stands there. And there's a whole generation of girls that love sports or could love sports but mm -hmm. don't have enough role models that they see in sports and even when i was younger growing up in the 80s and 90s there weren't that many you know mm -hmm. and now they're becoming more and more prevalent all of my daughters like sports um, my youngest daughter especially she's a sport junkie she's nine years old she can tell you every uk player <laughs> she can tell you the Bengals player she knows most of the nfl and ncaa men's and basketball and football teams mm -hmm. she's just awesome she's gotten really into liking women's sports and just being able to show her that women are really strong that they could do all those things and again the sports is a big world for women. There's sports tech, there's sports photography, there's podcasting, there's, you know, writing, mm -hmm. there's on air stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a big market for women in sports and I'm really excited to, you know, get to be a part of that. It's something that I love. You know, I credit my husband with that. My mom gave me the best advice when I got married. I was not a huge sports fan growing up because I just always felt like I couldn't do it. Sure. And um, my mom told me that my husband is a crazy super fan. And she's like, if you don't love sports, basically he <laughs> will leave you or sure. you guys will have nothing to talk about. <laughs> and so I just started annoying him with my questions. And bless his heart. Like he just got me so excited about it. And what I love about it is, you know, it really crosses every line. It doesn't matter what race you are, what sex you are. If you have on the same jersey as somebody else, you guys are best friends, your teammates. In mm -hmm. the city of Lexington, it's electric. People are screaming, "Big go BBN to each other across the street. They don't know who the hell they are. Yep. It's the middle of a Tuesday. And so you just... It, it's a collective excitement that everybody feels when you're a fan. And that's one of the best things about it. And it's such a supportive community, men and women, they all mm -hmm. really champion each other. And that's what you've seen too. The mm -hmm. NBA really take it upon themselves to really represent for the WNBA to really say, you know, they deserve more. They're super athletes. You know, they deserve to be seen more and heard more. And I think that played a big role. I think them really stepping in and making that happen for them was really important too. And I've been really excited to see them really step up and take some ownership of that too. A lot of them have daughters. And so uh -huh. they're thinking, you know, I want my daughters to be seen just the same way that I am out on the court. And I love that they've been doing that. It's good for our girls. Amen. Amen. And I tell people this all the time is that I learned how to play football from my father. I learned football 
from my mother. My mother taught me the sport, the ins and the outs. She taught me baseball. My mother taught me sports. She was the one screaming at the television every Sunday, every Monday, every Thursday, every time there's the Yankees on, you know, so I, I learned sports from the women in my life, you know, and it's one of those things that's always kind of taken me aback. Like my wife, much like you was okay, you know, yay, football's on, but didn't really know much, you know, now, now, unfortunately, she's a Cowboys fan. They're not all perfect. I see the pictures. Um, yeah, I see the pictures out there. She's not, she's not perfect. She's not perfect. She's beautiful and we love her, but she's not perfect. Um, but she'll talk to people sometimes. And one of the most frustrating things it is because now she knows football. She can talk football with the best of them. And there are times when people are like, oh, you know a lot of football for a woman. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that got to? Why does that got to be there? Why? Because she's not allowed to watch football. I mean, one of my favorite all-time like quotes, um, uh, former uh, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice left government to join the selection committee for the NCAA for college football. Upon that, because she's like a football, like an NCAA like mega fan. And upon that, you know, one of the questions that was asked of her was, um, well, you've never played football before. So how can you judge whether, you know, a team is good or not? And she said, well, I've never been Russian before, but I'm the foremost leading expert in Russian affairs. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so it's it's great to see representation. And it's crazy to me. It's, it's come such a long way. I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but I think it's an important one. Um, it's come such a long way. But yet we have situations like Brittany Griner right now still being interred over in Russia. If that was Chris Paul, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. Come never out happened. Me, uh, we would be at full scare war right now. Yeah. You know, like we back. would launch exactly. an actual attack against Moscow itself. But because Brittany was over there trying to supplement her minimum income from the WNBA by playing abroad and gets caught up in a potentially a global war. And we're all just sitting here like, oh, OK, maybe one day we'll get her back. Yeah, exactly. No big deal. She's gone now. Mm -hmm. It's insane to me. It's insane yeah. to me. So. You know, it's we've come a long way, but we still got a long way to go. Um, and I firmly believe it's women like yourself. It's apps like Ravon. It's it's TikTok and modern social media shining a light on these things that that I, I love the best. You know, it's one of the I things that drew me to Ravon. I do, too. And it's, you know, really the ways that social media is used in the right way. It's mm -hmm. used so many times to be hateful, but that, you know, mm -hmm. that's really the benefit of it is that there are these situations like that that go on that people don't know about, you know, and it gives that a way to have a voice mm -hmm. and, or, you know, maybe something can be done about some of these things. It's just like the W or um, the, the NCAA women's locker rooms. Something's going to be done now because that video came out mm -hmm. and it would not have been otherwise. If no, if she didn't make a fuss, if nobody raised their hands, if enough people didn't start screaming about it, nothing would have happened. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way that it's used well. And yeah. so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And and like I said, I love everything that you guys are doing with the app. I can't wait for the future. Um, you know, and I can't thank you enough A, for coming on today. I should have said that before. Oh, um, yeah. But <laughs> You're before... welcome. <laughs> well, I mean, I did ask you in the past and then you decided to go on Braden's first. So I'm not I'm not bitter about it or anything, you know. Well, so we is. couldn't line up our schedules and it was so funny because Gr Braden was like, he said it to me several times. He's frustrated. I was like, he'll get over it. This is part of our this is part of the Oh rivalry. yeah. This no, is part of it. I was busting Braden's chops. I was like, oh yeah, sure. I asked her months ago, and oh no, you don't want me on. I'm not good at these things. And then you ask her <laughs> once, and oh, she hops on quite convenient. And he was like, no, 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 she really does want to come on. I'm like, Braden, I'm just joking. I know. Even if she didn't want to come on, it's no hard feelings. I'm just busting your chops, buddy. <laughs> I know. He's awesome. And we had he a really is... fun time. His daughter is really cute, too. Oh, my God. She is adorable. And he is one of the sweetest people. I feel so yes. bad that he's linked up with us. <laughs> he is so oh, sweet. <laughs> he is such a nice guy. And James, really is. James is awesome. James I, is fantastic. Yes. There we'll keep him was, around for a couple more days. Yeah, I think so. There was something else, too. And what I love is he was always in the chats, you know, 
then mm-hmm. when he started hosting too, like he always had something good to say. So he's really brought that same fire to the hosting. Oh, and yeah. so that's what I love. And I love when, you know, selfishly I will pair certain people up against each other because I know that they already do well together. So mm-hmm. I love a chat where you guys are going against each other because it gets it gets nuts in there. It's oh, a nice yeah. fight. Yeah. It's a nice battle chat for real. Oh yeah, yeah. There are a couple of times. There are a couple of guys that I've that I've hosted with, and off the top of my head, I am just like spacing on names tonight. It's been a long day, yeah, but I know Lewis. that there's been a couple of times that we've had some really good back and forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lewis is another one. He really likes yes. to get in there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love hosting mm-hmm. with Lewis. And mm-hmm. I gotta say, there were a couple of times throughout the season. I know I said it a lot. I missed on a lot of things. But there were once or twice that I called a pick six and it actually happened. And I'm pretty sure I still yes. have screenshots in my phone as receipts. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I saved some of those too. Yes. Um, my, I don't ever, you know, everybody knows who I am in the chat, but I don't always broadcast it. But in the sure. UK chat, huh, my grandmother on my birthday, she decided to give me a shout out because bless her heart. Yeah, my mom and my grandmother, they're my biggest fans too. That's awesome. And then it started a whole thing. So I had to take some screenshots of that because I thought it was cute because then people that didn't know me, they were just like, hey, I don't know you, but happy birthday to you. And I thought, <laughs> I think they thought I was just some random person and not, you right. know, they didn't put the pieces together, but so I thought that was funny. My grandmother, she was like, oh, she was like, I guess that was an oopsie. And I was like, oh, no, it's, a, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I think I came in towards the tail end of that or at least saw one one or two messages because I remember I remember you saying something about that being your mom and your grandma. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, so, they're, you- they're a big supporter for me, so I'm thankful for them. That's good. It's important to have a big support group. You know, it's important to just, I mean, I'm, I've all the faith in the world that you could push on and do it all by yourself, but it's nice to have, you know what I mean? Those pillows of support that are telling you, Hey, you're doing the right thing. Hey, this is awesome. Hey, you know, even if there's words of advice and wisdom, you know, but it's nice to have that, that kind of support at your back that you have. Yeah. So before I let you go, you brought up that you were a Bengals fan Went to the Super Bowl, didn't have the best time in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, I said Matthew Stafford was going to win the Super Bowl the second he got traded to the Rams. So I, I know you called it early, you called it early. <laughs> and I let everybody know. Um, but this draft kind of interesting because in in the postseason, you know, in the Titans game, gets uh, Joe Burrow gets sacked nine times in the game following, um, I believe it was the Chiefs following the Titans. Um, he had maybe like 0.5 seconds of actual passing time and ability to read the defense. And then, you know, obviously they lose in the Super Bowl. They come into the draft and they draft one O lineman. Yeah, everybody else is on the defense. So kind of in I'm not saying I disagree because they were good picks, but kind of an interesting way to go when clearly protection for your quarterback is the thing. So how do you feel about their draft and how do you feel about the Bengals future? I, you know, my husband has been a diehard fan. So especially for him too, I wanted this win for both of us, mostly sure. for him because I knew it would have put him on a high for, you know, a good two years. years. It yeah. would have been, ev- it would have been everything. Sure. And UK football was playing well. We won't talk about UK basketball because you didn't ask and I don't want to bring it up. I didn't but, want to bring you know, that up for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he was, you know, it was, <gasps> that game was really exciting, but what's frustrating is that Joe Spur, Joe Burrow spent the entire time on his back, just mm-hmm. looking up at the sky. You know, he had nobody pr- to protect him. The O-line lost that game for them. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, no discredit to the Rams. They are amazing. Sure. But You're Joe Burrow was- Aaron Donald. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. But Joe Burrow was not able to do what he needed to do for them, what he normally does for them. And I do think that it's odd that they picked, you know, they said that they picked people that can play multiple positions and that they're going to be moving some people around and there's, you know, so um, they also got some more seasoned people, you know, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Um, I'm really optimistic. They have a good team. They obviously got to the Super Bowl, even with some of the holes in their offensive line. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they're better qualified than me over here on my couch to say. Fair maybe. enough. 
Fair you know, enough. I'm a, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt for a little while. You know, I'll give them a couple of games before I start bitching about it. They can't get it together, <laughs> but you know, I, I've got big thoughts. I've got big thoughts, but you know, since I'm minorly just a tad unqualified, you know, just a teeny, <laughs> I am a little, wor- you know, I'm a little worried about it. But I, you know, I think that they have a really good team, and they are starting to build a good team around him. You know, he definitely is going to be the money for them. Mm-hmm. He's just ice cold. I love watching him play. I, l- you got, you have to love watching Joe Burrow. He play. is so cool. <laughs> like, how do you he wake is. so? I loved he's Joe. Not that cool, I know. He is. He is like the coolest thing ever. I loved him from his national championship game. So I'm not gonna lie. Before that national championship game, I had no clue who Joe Burrow was. And then I see him. My wife and I were at TJI Fridays, as a matter of fact. And I see him go out there, and he throws his first touchdown pass, and he comes off the field, pointing at his ring finger, saying, "Give me my ring. I want my." I was like, "Damn." How ballsy do you have to be to throw one touchdown and say that you've won this thing? And it goes crazy for the rest of the game. I was like, all right, that kid, because, you know, we've had uh, a couple former NFL players on the podcast before. And the consensus from what they've said from gentlemen who have played in the game, there is not really a huge talent difference between most of your guys. There's the freak of nature's looking at Aaron Donald. Yeah. But for the most part, there's not really like this massive gap in talent. We see a massive gap in confidence. We see a massive yeah. gap in the ability to handle the pressure. So knowing a kid could come out there with that kind of bravado, just he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. He doesn't, yeah. He doesn't care. And, it, he doesn't... and it gives him an edge. And I really mm-hmm. do think it gives him an edge because 100%. he plays like that. And you could tell this year, like, he really pulled that team to where they needed to go. And even during games where they would be down and they were losing, you've got to have that kind of confidence to be able Mm -hmm. to get in the right mindset to come in there and just play. You can't give a shit. You're like, Mm -hmm. you have to have a winning mindset. And that's one of the best things I think he has is he's got that drive to win. For sure. He got sacked, like I said, nine times against Tennessee. Didn't matter. Comes out and in the AFC championship game is getting washed in the first half by like 21 points. Doesn't care. Comes back and wins the game. He's getting his ass, his face and Von Miller, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and arguably the best defensive trio in the National Football League and still only loses because Eli Apple can't cover a paper bag. I mean, he comes out there and he just doesn't care who you are, what you're doing, what your name is, what your stats are. He just doesn't give a shit. He yes. gave me very much Joe Namath vibes, like coming yes. out in mink coats and those cool ass sunglasses he yes, has. Yes, the sunglasses the dude is are the, the coolest best. thing on the planet. And, and the I Bengals, mean, the team played that way. They did. And they needed somebody that was cool like that to really bring the franchise back. Sure. You know? They needed sure. somebody that had that kind of swagger that made the, the Bengals really cool that, again, that made them really exciting. They've had some pieces like that, but that mm-hmm. was like a bomb when he came. Oh, yeah. And everybody was like, all right, I made myself a Joe Burrow t-shirt because we couldn't find any or buy any in my size. <laughs> and my youngest daughter, Eileen, wanted one. So we, I made her one, too, that says Joe and Burrow on the back still wears it. There you still go. Rep- yeah, still representing her Bengals. So, you, you know. They're they're awesome. I'm still really excited. I mean, I saw what he was able to do last year. They did, you know, step up some of their talent. So, you mm-hmm. know, I think they're going to be able to have a good season. I'm just really excited for NFL to start again. Oh. Now that the draft is over, you know, Amen. I've been all in. I've been all on. Ba- I've been on basketball mode, but you know mm-hmm. that ended early for me. So I've been, you know, excited for NFL coming back. So I'm ready for it now. You know, it's getting ready to start pretty soon, sooner than later. And I can't wait. So I'm, Amen. you know, they'll have plenty of time to really get some stuff together. And I can't wait to see those first games and really get a good glimpse of what it is that, you know, they can really do. But so what you're saying us. is we're going to see the, we're going to see the jets and the Bengals in the AFC championship. That's yeah. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yes. Yep. I'm going to yeah. roll with you on that. Yeah. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go Jets because if that happens, Oh, be the chat of the century. I might have to host. I might have to step in. Wild. I might have to step in and host, co-host something. You know, I love it. I have my 
my account, but I don't ever get in there and use it, you know, because I don't really want to be the host. That's not my thing. I like being in there and just being able to talk. But if that does happen, then we'll make that happen. Yes, let's yeah. do it. So before I let you go, uh, let everybody know where to find Rave on, you know, uh, where to find yourself. If you want people to find you on your social medias, give us one last one last hurrah for, for Rave on and then I'll let you get on out of here. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. We've been trying to schedule this for a long time. Yes. So you can find us at Ravon Sports on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you're on there as well, if you have professional folks. <laughs> and then it is free on Android and iOS, the app. It's always going to be free. You know, we built this for fans. We're super fans. So, you know, if you're hateful, you can take your suggestions to the trash. But if you've got some good ones, please feel free to send us a DM and let us know them. You know, I'm at HBIC at Rave on Sports on Twitter. So you can follow me as well. My TikTok is out there somewhere. I don't promote it anymore because it's been it's blown up there for a while. Yeah. I saw and you so were posted of some of the comments and stuff. People are stupid. <laughs> yeah, it was getting a little bit crazy. So, um. That one's out there. I won't promote that one, but you know, please come and follow it. Download the app. You know, let us know how you love it. We know you're going to. We built it for you guys, and everything that we do, even in the future, you know, we've got some new features coming out that we're not talking about because we're still focus grouping some things because we want to make sure that everything that we build inside the app is for fans. We mm -hmm. want it to be the best app for fans, built by super fans, just like you. I'm just a regular person in Lexington, Kentucky, who's a super fan who went out and built an app. So that's who I am. So thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I love it. I love it. Thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you for originally inviting me. It really has been an absolute blast in everything that I've been involved with Ravon. So thank you again, everybody. Please make sure you hop on the app, download Rave On. It's that simple. Go follow them wherever you can find them on all their social medias. And in the words of my co-host, said what I said, bitches.